So why should we be collaborating with Microsoft Teams? What's the use case for it? What should we be doing with it? How could it help us on our daily grind in the modern enterprise or corporate? So first off, the questions you have to ask is, is Microsoft Teams right for you? Typically, there are many social collaboration applications out there, such as Skype, Microsoft Teams, Slack, Workplace by Facebook, Yammer and Google Hangouts, to name but a few, and there are several thousand. Which is right for your business? What tools have you currently got in your business or corporation that are in use at the moment that your workforce is used to using? Are there updated versions? Are there better way of doing things? Is there functionality inherent in one particular application and not in the other? These are the questions you have to ask yourself. Microsoft Teams might not always be the answer for you, but generally with its fast range of functionality, it's probably going to be. However, it can be complemented with other applications as well, such as Workplace by Facebook or Yammer, also a member of the Office 365 productivity suite, that can help you collaborate in a more efficient and productive manner. Generally, the employee pain points are what we experience on a day-to-day -day basis in regards to our daily working life. Now, email has been around for years and years and years. And who would have thought that way back in the 60s that email become such a huge saturation and depletion of our own working day and what we call our resources and our time of our working day. Can you all remember the fact there used to be the, the guy or the lady pushing the mail trolley through office buildings, handing out nondescript reusable brown envelopes with internal mail? Then as email got brought in, how that person became less and less of a daily occurrence. And then with large documents in PDF formats being mailed and then accepted, you seldom see a guy with a mail trolley these days. Either way, email has been with us and is generally going to be here to say for at least the foreseeable future. However, the inboxes do suffer from the fact that it's generally unstructured. Your first email does, generally does not relate to the second email in your inbox. Poor email etiquette sees you being put in the to box as opposed to the CC box on multiple emails because people are not generally taught in schools and colleges how to use email and what the proper email etiquette should be. And of course, there's the consuming email overhead and the administration you have to go through on a daily basis to go through your mail and then flag it or put it in a folder and then respond to that email and everything's urgent and make sure it's not in capital letters and all these different aspects. And to make sure when you do respond, you're responding to the right people and you're not copying people in on that particular email that you shouldn't be. Real-time collaboration challenges. Now, a lot of these stem from working with SharePoint and with email in conjunction of a productivity suite. Now, this might not be SharePoint. It might be Sites if you're on a Google, um, if you're in a Google deployment. However, the lack of training leads to the emailing of documents. So your mailbox gets a huge raft of documents in it. And if you're working on a mobile or you're out and about in different cities around the world, visiting customer sites, or you generally work on the road and some clever Charlie turns around and emails you a 25 megabyte internal document, you're not gonna like them for that, are you? Finding information on multiple SharePoint instances can be a short, can be a real chore and, and not be conducive to proper collaboration. I always maintain when I go out to all my clients that if you want to kill somebody and hide the body, hide the body in SharePoint. No one's ever going to find it with the multiple SharePoints that go on. And if you're going through a SharePoint migration, that's compounded with different changing links. Collaborating through desktop sharing as well results in leader bias. One person does the sharing of the desktop. There's no co-collaboration or co-authoring there. There's the checkout and check-in mentality, which leads to a very linear way of working. And then when you've checked the document out, you forget to check it back in and somebody else who needs it can't check it back in. And then 
people start emailing the documents around and versioning control generally just goes right out the window. And all these can be really frustrating points to the employee in the modern enterprise. Also the lack of application integration, and I'm talking like third party apps, or if you're using intranet and you have certain sites of interest upon an intranet, what do you do there? People believe one application to move to another application, to move to an intranet, to move back to another application and back to what they were doing. And it's been reported by some of the analysts that people wasted the 60 minutes a day on changing applications. And then out of them, 40% of those then who lose that up to 60 minutes a day, lose their train of thought. Well, how negative towards productivity is that? Now, corporate level pain points. Now, corporate level pain points are different to what you generally see as an employee. At the corporate level and the IT decision makers, they're more concerned with where the data is in regards to data loss prevention. Compliance, are you compliant with all the different regulations, not to mention just GDPR? Is the information you got archivable? and searchable so the information is not lost on various commercial platforms and the tools that are provided are actually used by employees to communicate and collaborate within the enterprise. For example, if you use WhatsApp or commercial Facebook, then you can't search on that information. That information is lost out into the commercial cloud. Whereas Workplace by Facebook and Microsoft Teams and Kazala are all searchable and dedicated instances to your particular company. Therefore, you control the information and you are not got to worry about information leakage or data loss. And that's becoming more and more important now as people are finding company IP on commercial solutions. There's the cultural transformation as well, is that why should we get, why should how can we compellingly ask people who have been using and working tools in a certain way for years and years and years to use these new tools? What's in it for them? How is it going to make their lives easier? Now, some have said that we're in five to six more virtual teams now than what we were this time last year. And that is more likely an underestimate as global workforces become more and more not based in a geographic location. And as follow the sun methods on projects tend to be the norm now, as opposed to, you know, a one off, we have to learn how to collaborate in an easy and effective way where people have access to all the latest information, the latest version of the information and access to communication logs, wherever they may be. You may be, in fact, traveling to Australia or Japan or the States, or even just down the road, anywhere where you're away from your, your head office and you're using a laptop or a mobile device or a tablet. Using the mobile applications bound to these collaborative collaborativity hubs will allow you to stay connected to your teams. And how do you reduce the cost without reducing efficiency? So having people working from home and access to corporate networks via these hubs, access to all this information. How do you make this safe? Implementing a good social collaboration platform is all down to a good social collaboration policy and having one of those. Implementing something that's not going to be too disruptive, having a good management of change progress where you can actually promote adoption as opposed to hinder it. Just banging something out there is really going to destroy adoption down to the lower 20 percentile. Going through a nice phased approach with your deployment of your social collaboration tools, such as Microsoft Teams, is going to allow you that control that you can work with people within your divisions, your departmental heads your decision makers, to make sure they're represented in this digital space to the maximum of their capabilities. How would you overcome ne negative perceptions as well and roll out in the quickest time but achieve the maximum amount of adoption? 
Management of change here is key, and Microsoft use a format called Prosci or Prosci to deliver this. I myself are a Microsoft adoption specialist. I've been through the training, done the exam, and done the course, and evangelized this to many different customers. And adoption throughout the entire deployment of social collaboration is key. Also, finally on this slide is the integration of line of business applications. Now, line of business apps may be like Concur, Workday, SAP, Zendesk, or even integrating with custom in-house written applications. If they can be added in via a web link, via a web browser, they can be integrated in via a tab. All brought into one central hub. It's been stated that people waste hours and hours a day, or at least up to 60 minutes a day. And that equates to big money. And out of those people who waste up to 60 minutes a day, as we've mentioned, 40% of those lose their track. So having those line of business applications centralized so you can quickly flick in between tabs, in between windows, in between teams, can only help save you time, saving time, saves your sanity, saves your tenancy. That increases your workforce retention because IT is therefore no longer in the way. And then it's going to save you money. So how do we generally use the tools that we have today? Well, those of you who use Skype for business would have been quite surprised back in 2017 when somebody came onto the Microsoft stage and announced that Microsoft Teams was taking over from Skype. As it happens now, Skype online, it's a no-goer. You can't sign up for it now even if you wanted to, Skype online. Skype for business 2019 has recently been released. And as a result of this, you can still have on-premise Skype solutions over and above what the Skype 2015 solution gave you. So there's still an on-premise solution. Microsoft Teams comes in to alleviate some of that. Skype for Business gives you multiple presence across multiple devices and software. You know when you're busy. You know when people are do not disturb. You know when people are away. And if you've got it set up correctly, then all that's going to link into Office 365 and to Outlook. In addition to this as well, you can see then through across all these different devices when you can contact people. And this comes down to good etiquette. Existing meetings can be held on Skype for Business, but would have to be re-implemented when you go to Microsoft Teams. There is limited media sharing, however, as well. And Skype for Business is based on old codecs, where Microsoft Teams is built from the bottom up using commercial codecs, as opposed to those that are years old. External calls to PSTN numbers can be made with Skype for Business. IM chat, which can be used either to collaborate when people are in meetings or initially to reach out to see if they're free, is commonplace in any enterprise. Peer-to-peer -peer calling. And I said here when it works, because all this is down to internal bandwidth. How good is your bandwidth dictates how good your connectivity and how good your end user experience is going to be. Screen sharing and presentations, again, when connectivity is good enough, all adds to the experience of sharing screen, sharing a PowerPoint, getting people to follow along with you. This is generally how we're working in Skype for Business today. Presence in Microsoft Teams, the same as what you've had in Skype for Business. In addition, you've got new and migrated existing meetings. Now you've got this collaborative element that I'm calling out in Microsoft Teams. Effectively, you can co-author on documents, on spreadsheets, anything, PowerPoint presentations. You can co-author at the same time and leverage the power of the Office 365 suite. You've got video conferencing, which can be used in place of a virtual office and in basically improve the connectivity with your employees who just used to be an icon on the end of a phone. Seeing somebody's face, you can judge their body language. You can judge how they're responding to what you're saying. You can also leverage conversation history as well. And how important that could be when bringing new people into a team or project. Hey, go through the conversations. 
pick it up, see what's going on, give yourself an idea, get au fait with the people who you're going to be working with. Have a look, see what's been said. You can share files more easily, leveraging the inbuilt SharePoint and OneDrive capabilities and other online storage capabilities that can be integrated into Microsoft Teams. It's a hub, as we've mentioned, for line of business apps like Concur and Workday and SAP, including intranet sites. And you can also integrate into your team's news feeds or RSS feeds, giving you information on pertinent and relevant topics specific to that particular team. For example, you may be interested in dishwashing detergent and therefore having an RSS feed from a company like Procter & Gamble or Unilever, for example, might be important to you and to your supply chain. Using peer-to-peer -peer calling instead of Skype calling, which Skype can be sometimes unstable, let's face it, depending on your experience. All based on new codecs, Microsoft Teams makes this a more enjoyable and reliable process. Again, with screen sharing and presentations, mobile client for collaboration is also really good. Imagine being on a train, switching to the mobile client, from your laptop to your mobile device because you're going to go walking around London or something. You've got your earpiece in. You can still remain connectivity in areas of good Wi-Fi and um, mobile coverage. Even on a train, you can start sharing your mobile desktop. You're not only bound now to sharing the content of what you've got on your laptop or desktop PC. Now, that's a brief overview of how and where we'd be using Microsoft Teams to collaborate within a modern enterprise. I've been the collaboration colonel, and all I can say is learn by doing. On the website, there are many videos on the collaboration suites we're covering, not only with Microsoft Teams, but Workplace by Facebook and Google G Suite and Office 365. I can be contacted by the following social media networks. And thanks very much for watching and check back for more videos in the series.